What's going on gamers? My name is John with Gamester81.com. This is going to be my top 10 original Game Boy games that I recommend. I'll put a link to part one here. You guys can check it out. That's numbers 20 through 11. There are so many great Game Boy games out there. There's 814 that were released, all different regions. As I mentioned in part one, the cool thing I like about collecting Game Boy games, it gets overshadowed by the, the Nintendo Entertainment System. So A, uh, games are much less expensive, and B, games are region free. So I can play games from PAL regions, from, uh, from Japan, etc., which opens up the library of games that I'm able to play on my Game Boy, which is awesome. So without any further ado, let's check out number 10. Number 10 on my list is a game that came out in 1989. It's a launch title that came out with the Game Boy. It's Super Mario Land. It was developed and published by Nintendo. It was actually designed by Gunpei Yokoi, who actually designed the Game Boy. It's the only Mario game that did not have Shigeru Miyamoto involved with the development. In fact, Super Mario Land's gameplay is a little unique. Uh, they did have Fireball, but the Fireball actually bounced at a 45 degree angle. It would actually, if there's an object above it, it would keep bouncing. And you can collect coins with a fireball, which is also kind of unique. You, you can do that before. Uh, looking back on it, the game, because it was a launch title, the graphics certainly uh, show that. It was uh, certainly, uh, Graph Lake is not the best game. It's a short game, there's only four stages. Also unique is this game did not feature Bowser or uh, Princess Peach. In fact, it had uh, Princess Daisy was introduced, and she's still being used for future Nintendo games since then as well as uh, Tatanga, which is an uh, enemy who is not Bowser, but uh, he steals Princess uh, Daisy. A surprise, another princess is kidnapped, and it's up to Mario to save her. So there's four stages in this game. It's kind of a short game, uh, but I remember sitting there, and uh, it was a toy store called Lionel's Play World. I remember it was like yesterday, and I remember seeing a demo of this, and I was being blown away at the gameplay and being able to play Mario Brothers on the go, which is pretty great. So. Certainly one to check out as number 10 on my list. Number nine on my list is a game that came out by Capcom. I had a lot of Capcom games that came out in my part one, I already mentioned, but this one's awesome because it's called Gargoyle's Quest. It came out in 1990. It's a platformer, but it's got hints of RPG elements as well, which is very unique. Uh, and basically your firebrand is the main protagonist. If you've played games like uh, Goats and Goblins and Ghouls and Ghosts. He's actually in those games, so it's kind of a spin-off of the Ghosts and Goblins series. Uh, there was actually a sequel called uh, Gargoyles Quest 2, which came out for the NES, as well as one for the Super Nintendo, which is awesome. It's called Demon's Crest, which is one of my favorite Super Nintendo games out there. Uh, definitely all three of those are worth checking out, but this is number nine on my list. It's a great platforming game with unique RPG elements. What more can you say? That's number nine. Number eight on my list is a game that was developed by Nintendo. It's Donkey Kong, came out in 1994. Now, initially when I picked up this game, I thought it was just gonna be a port of the arcade, Donkey Kong. And for the first four stages, that's true. It plays just like the arcade. But then it gets to a whole other story where you're basically Mario and you're supposed to take, you're supposed to pick up these keys and unlock uh, the door and avoid Donkey Kong. It's, it's pretty cool actually, and it's very unique. Uh, in fact, it's probably one of the most unique Donkey Kong games I've played uh, before. And it spun off a whole bunch of series called Mario vs. Donkey Kong. So if you're familiar, familiar with those games, this is kind of the first of those. Uh, but it was also unique about this game. It was developed for the Super Game Boy. So if you have a Super Game Boy, which I recommend picking one up because you can play all these games on there. This one's cool because when you load it in the Super Game Boy, it actually has kind of a framework that looks just like original Donkey Kong Arcade, which is cool. And has a little better graphics as far as colors go. So, so that's number eight on my list is Donkey Kong. Number seven on my list is a game that came out in 1991. It is called Final Fantasy Adventures here in North America. In Europe and PAL regions, it's considered Mystic Quest. In Japan, it's Final Fantasy something or other, something or other. <laughs> and I don't know why they had different names in different regions, but uh, basically, it's not really a Final Fantasy game. It plays top down, very similar to Zelda, although there's RPG elements where you can level up and stuff like that. But it's actually considered part of the Mana series. So it's a first of the Mana series. So if you're familiar with Secrets of Mana and stuff like that, this is the first one of that. So I uh, kind of started the whole series. This is considered a great game for the system. It's really fun to play. I remember when I picked it up, I was expecting a Final Fantasy game. I was really surprised that it plays not like a Final Fantasy game, which I think is a good thing in this, in this case because the story is great. And if you like games like Legend of Zelda, uh, definitely check it out. But there's certainly RPG elements to it as well. So that's Final Fantasy adventures. Number six on my list is a game that came out in 1992. It's Kirby's Dreamland. It's the first of the Kirby series. 
It spawned off a number of sequels. Kirby's Adventure for the NES is awesome as well. Uh, but I love the gameplay. You're basically a Kirby. You can swallow your enemies and shoot them out, use it for weapons. Uh, it's a very cool platforming game. It was developed by HAL Laboratory, which is a really great game uh, and one of a must-have for the system. Uh, it Unfortunately, uh, you can't, unlike Kirby's Adventure, you can't uh, kill your enemies and take the abilities at this point. And what's interesting about this game particularly is on the box art, it's actually Kirby's white. He's not pink like where you know him as today. Number five on my list is a game that came out in 1995. It's called Donkey Kong Land. It was developed by Rare, and it's actually uh, a spin-off of the Donkey Kong Country series that came out for the Super Nintendo. There's three Donkey Kong Lands that came out for the Game Boy, one, two, and three. The third one was specifically developed for the Game Boy Color, uh, but this is the great series of games. Uh, it, doesn't pl it plays very similar to the original Donkey Kong Country, but it's a different story. Uh, and unfortunately, with, it doesn't show both characters on screen at one time due to limitations of the Game Boy. But uh, when you die and you have the other character, it actually switches over, uh, which is cool. But uh, definitely a great platforming game to check out. The music really holds up. And the graphics, surprisingly, for 8-bit uh, really, really hold up as well. I would have loved to see this for the Nintendo. Unfortunately, when this game came out, the Nintendo was done. But it would have been cool to see this on the original NES. Number four on my list is a game that came out in 1998. It's Pokemon Red and Blue. There are two different cartridges. Uh, also, Yellow came out, which is a kind of combination of the two. Uh, and there's other Pokemons that came out, obviously, since then. These are the first two that came out, though. And it's an RPG game. You're supposed to defeat Pokemon and collect Pokemon by throwing Pokeballs and all these things. So it's, it's actually a pretty fun game. I didn't really get into it uh, right away. But the last several years, I've actually been playing them quite a bit. They're actually really fun to play. The cool thing about these two is you can take the cable link, you can actually trade uh, Pokemon. Uh, you can actually do it with uh, other games too, the Crystal and other uh, future games as well. So you actually collect, I think, there's 100, I think there's like 151 different Pokemon in the Blue and Red series. So uh, definitely worth checking out. It started off a multi-billion dollar uh, franchise for Nintendo. So this is the first one. Uh, and little did we know when these came out that they'd still be huge today. Uh, outside of Pokemon Stadium for the N64, really Pokemon has been kind of exclusive for Nintendo, specifically for the handheld market, which is kind of cool. Number three on my list is the Super Mario Land 2, uh, Six Golden Coins, came out in 1992. Uh, this by far is not graphically not only a better game than Super Mario Land 1, but this, it actually plays more like Super Mario World. You actually, it's a top-down world, you can choose your level, kind of where you go. Uh, there's 37, 37 different levels in this game. Uh, you can actually, you have Fireball, you have uh, obviously a power-up as well. But the cool thing about the Fireball is because the, the black and white, actually it's the only Game Boy game that has a feather, actually features a feather. There's another power-up, it's called a Bunny Mario. It's a carrot. If you eat the carrot, you have these bunny ears. You can actually like float around with those. Uh, the, the enemies are different. Bowser, again, does not make an appearance in this. Instead, Wario makes a debut in the Nintendo series, and many of us know who Wario is today. Uh, he's the main uh, antagonist in this game. Uh, but it's a super fun game uh, and also unique to this one as well compared to other Mario games is when you collect coins, when you collect 100 coins, usually you get an extra life. In this case, you don't. You actually, uh, in this game, you collect them, you can actually play mini games after the stages and you get one-ups and stuff like that that way. So it's kind of unique on how that uh, Nintendo decided to do that. Number two on my list is Zelda Link's Awakening. This is a great Zelda game. It's a top-down Zelda game. It was actually developed right after Link to the Past for the Super Nintendo. Uh, it was going to be actually a port to Link in the Past, and they decided, you know what, they're going to create a whole other story. It's one of the few Zelda games that's not taking place in Hyrule. In fact, it's kind of a dream world. It's called Koholint Island. He has to basically collect eight instruments and find the wind fish uh, to go back. But uh, it's a great game, a kind of a very unique story. Uh, definitely, if you check this out, I really recommend, like I said before, the DX version. But this is probably one of the better Zelda games, in my personal opinion, is Link's Awakening for the Game Boy. Number one on my list is a game that came out in 1989. It had to be number one on my list because it was a pack-in for the original Game Boy, and that is Tetris. What a classic puzzle game. Not only is it classic, not only is it a lot of fun to play, the music's great, but it helped sell and push sales for the Game Boy. There's a lot of drama and backstory involved with the Tetris and licensing. You know, Atari had licenses to Tetris for the computer, for example. Uh, and there's another license for the arcade, and there's another license for the console, and there's some lawsuits back and forth on who had the actual license for the consoles, and um, Nintendo ended up suing Atari. Long story short, they got they won it, uh, and they decided to make Tetris the packing game for the Game Boy, and boy, was that a smart move because these things went off the shelves like that, 
and the Game Boy ended up selling over 118 million systems and is one of the most successful uh, systems of all time. Uh, but it's not only that, it's just a great game. It's one of those must-owns for the system. You can pick up really cheap as Tetris is number one. Well, guys, that concludes my top 20 original Game Boy games of all time. I encourage you guys to post a video response. Let me know what your top games are. If Maybe if I missed something, let me know. Guys, there's over 814 Game Boy games total available, so keep in mind this is a completely hard list to make. So all of our lists are probably going to be different. As always, guys, I really appreciate you guys following me on Facebook and Twitter. I'll put links below. Also, I want to remind you guys, check out my website, GameStreetOne.com, for exclusive content, news, and reviews, as well as great contributors to the site as well. Thanks, guys, for your support. We'll see you guys soon. Happy gaming. Take care.